What's up, Make Pop Music? It's Austin Hull from Austin Hull Audio and Visual and Make Pop Music. And today I wanted to bring a short little tutorial for you guys. So a lot of the questions I get are about synthesis and sound design. And people just think that their sound design and their synths and everything sound a bit boring and a bit stale in the mixes, even if they're solid presets. So today I wanted to go ahead and we'll take a look into a track that I produced for an artist named Sari, that's S-R-Y. So we're going to take a look at his track Lifestyle that should be coming out if it's not already out. Uh, so definitely check it out. But we're going to look at what I did with some of the synths because a lot of them started with just really basic serum presets and then I did a lot of sound design post preset. So without further ado, let's hop into the session and just kind of look at some ways that you can spice your synths up. Okay, so we're into the session. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and show you some of the synth tracks as they were just with the presets and then I'll kind of show you what I did to just make them a little bit different. So you know what, let's go ahead and let's actually give the song a listen and I'll mute the vocals just so you can hear the sense a little bit better. So as you can tell, it's a really, really dark instrumental. Uh, it's got a lot of vibe, a lot of character, a lot of space and depth, lots of reverb on this one. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's take a listen. So one of the main things we have is actually a loop that I got from a pack. I can't remember which specific pack, but the first thing I did was I filtered it out. Here's it originally. So I just dragged a lot of that high end out. And then what I did is I actually automated kickstart to start pumping when other stuff comes in. So adding that movement and filtering it out makes that sit a lot better into the mix. Here's it without all that. So you can see it adds this really, really cool bounce. And then what I did is I duplicated that for the low. And then I added this really, really cool plugin called Halftime. I think it was like 12 bucks. Um, it's from the same people that make Kickstart actually. So um, check it out. It's pretty similar to like Gross Beat. And then what I did is I just set it to where it would chop this kind of in half. So we took that original synth and then we created this one under it. Then we have this bell lead right here. And all we're really doing with that one is filtering it out. So that one we're not doing a whole ton to, but this pad, we've also got some filtering going on. We're filtering a lot of the low end. This one is where we got really creative though with the sound design. So this bell is just a uh, bell from Halion Sonic. So here's it with nothing on it. And you're probably like, wow, that sounds corny as shit, right? So what I did was I threw on Camel Crusher to give it some bite and just a little bit of saturation. Just to give it some depth. Then I added Doubler because I was like, you know what? Let's go for this like really weird kind of chorus effect. So then we have this. So that's already given it some vibe. Then I put on halftime, and I believe that the halftime is only like 50% wet, so you're getting some of the original sound, plus it's halving it, so you're getting some of like a little bass melody under it. So now we've got that. Then we've got a delay. Then of course we're gonna filter it with Pro Q because I don't want much most of that top in. And the cool thing is, is that like in the song when the chorus comes in, we can pull back on a lot of these filters so it'll really explode when we come in. So we don't keep it filtered out for the whole song, but specifically for the verses and the areas that we want a little bit more toned down. It's really nice to have that. That way we can open it back up when we want it. Then we just added some reverb, so pretty standard. The real key to this one is was doubling it and doing that, which made it kind of weird and wonky and kind of offset. And then we have that halftime, uh, which really kind of adds 
that really nice bass melody under it that I didn't play. Then we have a little vocal chop coming in. And here's what that sounded like originally. So I bit crushed it with just the stock bit crusher and Cubase. I added doubler. Of course, filtered it out some more. And then I actually added auto tune last because I wanted it to have this like really, really weird tuning on a lot of the effects. So it has like this really, really weird wonky kind of like off balance vibe with the auto tune coming last in the chain, but I like it. Then we have this low vocal chop underneath that. Uh, same kind of processing, bit crusher, doubler, uh, filtered out, reverb, delay, and auto tune. But let's go ahead and let's take a listen to all of these without any um, like inserts on them, just to hear how different this production would sound if everything was just kind of like that standard, you know, preset as it came. So check this out. Here's what it would sound like. So as you can see, it just, it loses a lot of the character. And honestly, it's a bit boring. It's a bit stale. It's a bit dry. So adding all of these filters and adding all of these different kind of effects and characteristics is a really, really, really good way to just, you know, give it some depth and give it some vibe. And then we'll kind of go over the chorus really quickly because I, I get this question a lot about like, Austin, how do you choose what sense to layer and how do you choose the layers? So let's go ahead and we'll just hop into that. Let me just turn all these effects back on. So in the chorus, we have this. So I wanted a little more top end, so I just duplicated the bell melody and used a vintage bell preset. And then for processing, again, doubler, halftime, H delay, and camel crusher. Here's what it sounded like originally. Then we have this celli pluck, and this was done with pad shop. And here's the original. There's it with all the processing. It makes it really wide, kind of gives it that depth and that space and that dimension. Then we have this crushed bell. Here was the original for that one. So it's a really boring sounding preset. Then I just threw on a filter. Use Camel Crusher to add some uh, compression and a little bit of saturation. Bit crushed it to give it that weird little effect. Scooped, there was like a really harsh frequency here. Scooped out the tops a little bit and added some reverb. Now we have this. And honestly, that's really all this song had. It was really, really stale and boring when I had a lot of the presets and a lot of the just like bells and pads and stuff like that. So I wanted to use the doubler a lot. I wanted to use some bit crusher. I wanted to use, uh, you know, some reverb and some delay just to give it some space and some depth. And then just getting really, really weird with like the filtering, sweeping stuff in, sweeping stuff out, just kind of doing all of those different elements in the mix uh, really, really helped it stand out so it doesn't sound so vanilla and so generic. So yeah, next time that you're, you know, creating a song and you're kind of, you know, going over the synths and you're thinking, eh, it just sounds kind of boring, before immediately reaching for another preset or before immediately, you know, layering it with other stuff, just try to process it, you know, use some distortion, use some filtering, use some delay, use some reverb. Modulation is always really, really cool. Sometimes you can get a plug-in like, you know, FabFilter Saturn or FabFilter Time list where it's got these really weird like time-based loop like effects in them so definitely don't be afraid to get too creative because a lot of the time there's a lot of potential that you're leaving on the table with your synth awesome so as you can see there's a lot of different ways that you can spice up a synth things like doing a half time adding delay and reverb adding you know maybe like a rotary effect filtering it panning it doing all kinds of weird modulation spreading it out all of these are ways that you can just add vibe add character into that synth so it doesn't necessarily sit in the same range as the preset might or it doesn't sit in the same range as other things and it just kind of gives it some life and some breath into your mix so definitely don't be afraid to kind of experiment with the synth outside of that actual synth plugin you know use your inserts 
use your mind, use your heart, just do anything that you feel like might take it over to the edge. So get creative, get funky. Hopefully dissecting this one kind of helped you guys get some more ideas for what you could do for your sense. But as always, we appreciate it for Make Pop Music. We will be back with more content soon. Much love, peace out. Only fucking with the bougie benches, even the drugs are designer. And what I'm before my headliner, from Tokyo to Canada.